Good after evening. We're going to get started here. So this is the Azure Spring Cloud getting started. Um, Azure Spring Cloud. Yes, it makes it easy to deploy Spring Boot based microservice applications to Azure with zero code changes. And we'll walk through a full app at this point. So currently, yes, I'm using a free account to demo this. So you can play with this if you've never played with it before. If you go to the Azure Microsoft site, uh, you can click on the free account and create an account. Once you have an account, we can then go on and get started. One of the key advantages of moving your application from internal is that you can take advantage of the cloud and the avail availability to scale and to support more users and to uh, simplify your data center management by paying a flat monthly fee versus having to hire staff, electricity bills, worry about computer updates. You get all of the monitoring, a registry service, you can integrate into your pipeline, plus other services which allow you to really expand your app without having to uh, purchase a lot of uh, equipment or staff, which you may have to, at some point, not keep busy all the time. You can just pay for the things and use them as you need. So the real key is to accelerate development. That's really the advantages of the cloud. You can go with just a limited setup on your uh, laptop or your desktop. You don't even need a full environment to actually get started. You can actually get started with a Chromebook, think of that, and actually start building your apps. And, and, uh, and then you gain all the power of monitoring and the setup that uh, for those that understand all of the things you need today to manage your security and to manage your app. One of the key things you'll probably want to download is the command line tools. And you can download those for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, of course. You can also, if you have another cloud, you can actually run them in a Docker shell, where if you already are using cloud services to host, and of course, an Azure cloud, cloud shell. And you get the advantages of a web app, databases, and of course, Kubernetes. So let's go through what we're going to do today. Today, we're just going to talk a little about just how to take an app that you already have built, a Java app, and easily provision it out to a server. We will show you how to uh, utilize an app that it's built off of Spring. And if you don't know Spring, if you go out to the spring.io website, you can learn all the advantages of Spring. It makes Java productive. And they give you a lot of templates and code so you can easily get started. So why Spring? Yep, Spring makes programming Java quicker, easier, and safer for everybody. Wow because it gives you a lot of things out of the box and templates. In fact, uh, the template we're going to use today, I include the security uh, 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 dependency. And I right in my app, I add the high level of security uh, um, components and the uh, integration that allows me to add the security I would need for production applications. You see here, Dick Sporting Goods, you know, they have a lot of tools. The framework comes with a lot of things. So that's why Spring, and you already know that because you have apps. So for this, I just went out and created a quick app using the startspring.io website. 
And I just added, you know, Spring Web, even though I didn't do anything major other than an HTML page. I also uh, added web services in a real app. You probably have that Spring Security. And I'm just using the in-memory database. I'm using Java 11. Uh, Azure Cloud currently supports Java 11 and Java 8. Does not support Java 15 yet, just for your reference. So out here, just to see some of the code uh, that I have out, and I'll show you the GitHub in a second. The only thing I added to that demo was this a simple security container, and I'm just utilizing the in-memory and just the username is and password, just so when we see the app. So this is the GitHub where you can pull that down if you wanted to play with Azure with some free code right out of the box without having to write anything just to test it. So let's log into uh, your Azure account, portal.azure.com. If you type Spring Cloud in the little search box, you will see it there and you can select it. Then you can create your Spring service by just clicking the Add button and you will be able to add. Once you've added, you can determine what pricing, you can select things. We just use, since we're using the free one, we did basic and we're just using a small five CPU, 10 gigabyte system. Uh, and you see the prices, you know, it seems pricey, but if you think if you pay a admin and support staff, you probably pay about 500 a month for that support hours, just for someone to manage your infrastructure for your production application. And then if you had a bigger system, you might want uh, to pay that. And clearly that you understand you're saving those costs. So click to create, it will take you through. And we're just gonna use the default settings in this case. And once we uh, have the, it will go ahead and deploy a empty, simple Java app that they have for it. You can download the details of that, but that's really just a placeholder. We use the GUI to actually create it. You could do all the creation on the command line, but we thought just, just to show you that you'd probably start there anyway, because you want to set up and make sure things are there. And then at some point after a minute, few minutes, it will say it's deployed. You can actually just look at theirs if you want it. But we're going to actually use our code. So now we'll go and if you think we need to add an app and we'll create an app and you'll see we'll select and you get to select Java 11. We're selecting Java 11. You see we're using a small a small application there. You, and the advantage there, you can scale up without having to buy hardware. It can test your performance of your app with a, a large scale hardware without having to buy equipment. So even if you were just trying to prove out, yep, our app will perform, where you just did it just to test that you need a system of this size, you can understand how what you potentially need and use it just for the testing and building out. Um, then you'll get started. Da -da -da. And it'll create and say it's deploying. Next, you'll see that you have your app there and an app name. And you need to assign an endpoint. So you'll have a URL that you can access outside of the Azure secure environment, but we'll show you that in, in a little bit too. Doo -doo -doo. You can export that template so that you can reuse it. And so if you think of building templated systems, if you had to do that with hardware, which you really can't because you got to buy it from Dell or HP or, or from one of the Linux providers, and then get it in, set up the electricity, plug it in. You see all the advantages of using cloud servers where 
we didn't have to go through all of that of worrying about the infrastructure and we can create templates that we can reuse. So you can have standard configurations that your company or other people might want to use. And so the core app is installed. Like you said, if you have the tools installed, we can now show you how we deployed this app. So if you wanted to try this on your own later, you can go to my GitHub uh, clone or pull down this code. Uh, once you've cloned it or pulled it down, you can just, you need Maven installed. By default, we're just using Maven for the example we had. You could use Gradle also. We build it, we create the executable jar that is located in the uh, target area. Now we will use the command line tools to log in to your Azure. When you type AZ login with the command line tool, it'll pull up a browser, verify that you can log in and that will allow this to log in. And then once you're logged in, I can run this command, Azure Spring Cloud app deploy. That's the resource area I created uh, using the website, specify my external service area and the name of the app. Uh, and then I can specify the executable jar for my spring application. It'll say, yep, configuring the default settings, it's uploading. And then it will give a lot of uh, JSON output about the template and what it actually built. And then I can go back in to the Azure Cloud. I can then assign an endpoint and you'll see I have a URL there. And there is the app. And you see it gives me a login screen because I actually uh, added a security page. Yes, it is that simple. You've actually deployed your app and gained all of this infrastructure. So if you wanted to see in real time, let me show you, I'll pull over and let's escape this out and minimize that. So I can go to my Azure cloud just so you can see the exact example of the app. You see it's there running. If I click on it, it'll open. I just use the standard user and the password is password. You can actually hit this. And you see, this was just my demo app. Um, and I can scale up and scale out. I can redeploy. Um, if we look at my GitHub, when you pull down, you can see all the source and you can actually play with it and, and Get a feel for how simple it is. If I take you to the actual command line, you can see the commands I would run. So I'm in the application. So with my actual run, um, if I did my deployment command, I actually had it. So if I do history type, Minus 100, type grep deploy. You can see the one I have here, just so you can get a feel for how simple it is. I can actually update some code just to show you how simple that is. So let me just update a little code. CD source, CD name, CD resources since I'm just using CD. I just did a static. When you build your node, you'll uh, index to HTML. Yes. And updated and redeployed. Boom. Boom. That. Zach was here. So, as you can see now, 
can actually run my maven command. I can do a clean package. Dump it down. You can see the application building out. It built my app. So now I can run that and to deploy what I think I had there. So I actually can run, copy, let's clear it. So I can run my Azure command. If you see cloud, Azure, I can hit it, boom. And you see it usually is gonna take uh, minutes to run. It's actually running. Bump it down. Uploading the blob. Updating the deployment in the spring demo app. This can take a while. So like we're saying, it's updating our actual app instance. And when I come back here, it's actually updating it. You're going to see it change. It's going to start to build out. And if I go back and look at my metrics, this my app. So slowly but surely updating. Takes a little while since I am using the free service. Talk slowly but surely. And there you go. So it finished. And then you see the information that's returned it gives me the resource location and the data. It's updating and the spring, and then it states discovery down, succeeded. So now if I go to my app and reverse, you notice it asked me to log again, because this is like a new app. And I go to password and you see updated, redeployed, Zach was here. Simple, straightforward easy tool. So feel free to take advantage of this in your future.